Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solars. Happy Sunday to all watching around Australia for your weather forecast update this April 14th, 2024. I've got quite a lot to get through in this forecast. Some significant falls expected for far northern Queensland, which we will take a look at first. And then also a developing tropical cyclone in the Arafura Sea, just near Timor-Leste, uh, north of Darwin. But first off, here is a message from the channel sponsor. So as many of you know, I've been tracking the weather here for about three months now on YouTube. Amassed a very generous 13,000 subscriber followers. Following. But I do feel like now that we move out of cyclone season in Australia, for those of you that want to learn more about tropical cyclones and also find out more about weather around the world, we're going to now branch out into more weather coverage, not on this channel, but on my new channel, Cyclones Extra. So go and subscribe to that. The first 1,000 subscribers will get access to an exclusive community poll. So go and check that out as well. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be tracking Western Pacific storms. We're going to be tracking South Pacific. We're going to be tracking Southwest Indian Ocean, maybe even some more North Indian Ocean storms around India and Bangladesh as well as we move into the northern hemisphere cyclone seasons and if we get a couple of powerful ones move through the Atlantic and the eastern Pacific we're going to be tracking those as well that's kind of going to be my hobby ground for tracking tropical cyclones and giving a detailed forecast on those as well um, using the windy.com application and also uh, just talking about it on another channel because I don't feel like uh, uploading videos like that is appropriate for an Australian weather channel But they will certainly be coming out on Cyclones Extra So again, make sure that you go and subscribe to that. It's going to be a great new channel We're going to have a lot of fun over there to, uh, tracking other tropical cyclones And yeah, I just thank you so much for the support on this channel and in advance for the next channel as well But let's get straight back into the weather over for Australia okay, so, yeah. so take a look at things right now We're zoomed in on fine northern Queensland the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Paul are now moving up towards the Cape York Peninsula. You can see this convective stack here, which is south of Port Moresby on PNG. That is the remnants itself of Tropical Cyclone Pool or Ex-Tropical Cyclone Pool. It still does have a little bit of circulation. I mean, calling it a tropical cyclone, even a remnant low at this stage is very generous because it looks absolutely appalling. And that is the case as this system moves through the Cape York Peninsula. And it'll be the case over the next couple of days. But you can notice these stronger, more fresher winds, almost gale force winds throughout the Coral Sea that are going to be extending along the Queensland coastline. They're going to be starting from this evening uh, and really start to pick up the pace on Tuesday especially. That's going to be bringing enhanced rainfall to far northern Queensland. We're going to take a look at that right now because from Tuesday onwards right through Wednesday and Thursday expect up to 500 millimetres in some select locations on the uh, Cape York Peninsula. Not so much around the Cairns Townsville area anymore especially from the Eastern Bef model. They've since backed off the forecast a lot uh, but still, the Axis G3 expecting quite a bit of rainfall to fall in the danger. It's just going to be a little bit further north than what the location was yesterday. Like I did say, the details were very confident on the forecast, but details do change. And in this case, they have shifted about 100 kilometers further north. Uh, but ironing out those details is what happens in the forecast as we get closer to the time. And right now, the detail has been ironed out so that we have the rainfall moving a little bit further north. Then it's going to be the danger that really do cop it on Wednesday and Thursday, hopefully easing off Thursday evening and it's going to be a return to the sunny conditions that uh, far north Queensland has been teased with uh, over the past couple of days. And yeah, no rainfall in the foreseeable future, rather, uh, from Friday onwards. But yeah, definitely going to be from Tuesday afternoon onwards, there's going to be a significant amount of rainfall falling there. And especially up in the northern parts of the far north uh, Queensland area between Lockhart River right up to Thursday Island, some very significant rainfall is possible there as well. Over the next five days, you're talking about rainfall accumulations approaching 300 millimetres for some select locations. In the Daintree as well, some pretty significant rainfall totals too, probably up towards 350 to 400 millimetres. Back down slightly from yesterday, but I do still feel like 300 millimetres is on the cards for areas around Mossman or Port Douglas. Cairns itself, maybe only about 100 millimetres um, on the cards. Innisfail and Tully, 100 or 150 millimetres apiece. I think that the rainfall here is slightly underestimated for those areas. Um, but yeah, certainly going to be some significant rainfall moving through that area. The Axis G3 model is kind of the only one really picking up on it right now, but considering its consistency, it's the model of choice right now for this weather event. And it's generally a pretty good model to use for rainfall events as well. So I do like the Axis G3 forecast model for that reason. It's also quite a high resolution model compared to the GFS especially. Um, so it gives us a pretty accurate and in-depth picture of what the weather is actually happening for these select locations. Now taking a look for the Northern Territory as well, you might 
might be able to see some increased rainfall accumulations as well in the Arafura Sea or in the Timor Sea uh, here. That's really going to pick up over the next 10 days. And this is where we're going to be seeing a significant tropical low or even a tropical cyclone start to develop up here. This could bring impacts to far north Queensland as well. Even though it's going to be miles away, the amount of moisture that's going to be pulling in across far northern Queensland it will likely drive rainfall accumulations up there through the roof. Uh, especially for areas around Thursday Island and Weeper, as most systems do uh, when they form in the Timor Sea or the Gulf of Carpentaria. But certainly right now, Gulf of Carpentaria off the current of the tropical cyclone formation. The Coral Sea still has a slight chance of throwing out a tropical cyclone in around uh, three or well, maybe a week or so time. I was going to say three days, but certainly not three days. But maybe next Saturday or Sunday, we've got to look for a tropical low there. There's going to be a lot more on this later on in the forecast period. But by next weekend, all of our focus will be up in Darwin for a late season. And what could be quite a strong tropical cyclone up here, the Eastern Relief and the GFS model not overly keen on it, but the Axis G3 model really keen on a strong tropical cyclone moving into the Bonaparte Gulf here. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, giving Western Australia and the Northern Territory quite the scare by the looks of things. But considering it is really late season, it's going to have very little time to rapidly intensify and it'll only be uh, probably a category two or category three strength system at peak intensity. And it'll be weaker than that if it does make a landfall on the Northern Territory or into Western Australia, it'll likely probably be a category one at worst, maybe a category two. But again, considering it's eight days out, we're gonna have to wait and see on what actually happens regarding this system. You bet there'll also be coverage on Cyclones Extra. So make sure you are subscribed to that channel because two videos a day, I mean, if you really like my voice, don't understand why, but go for it, go and subscribe there. And there'll be plenty of videos on this system and all other systems affecting Australia and around the world. Um, taking a look at rainfall for this cyclone, I mean, I kind of did spoil it a minute or so ago, but yeah, very significant rainfall accumulations are possible with this system. It will be a slow moving one, so rainfall will be driven up through the roof for the Northern Territory, especially if it does come close to making a landfall. But I mean, just looking at the forecast here, it looks like this system falls apart as it makes its final approach to uh, Western Australia or the Northern Territory. And I have a hunch that that might be because of wind shear. Typically later on the season, wind shear is not favorable at all for tropical cyclones. Uh, around the nation and yeah it really doesn't look like it's going to be very favorable for tropical cyclone activity wind shear of around 20 to 30 knots that's going to cause the cyclone some problems the jet stream typically does move a little bit further north about this time of the year I mean, most of the time it's sitting at around the uh, 30 degrees south latitude but right now it's probably at about 25 degrees south uh, so yeah that will bring the elevated levels of wind shear up a little bit further north and that's why tropical cyclones perish uh, even if they only get down towards uh, the tropic line and the Tropic of Cancer later, uh, Capricorn rather, later on in the year uh, as opposed to peak season when they might be able to get a little bit further down south before they start to terminally weaken. I hope that made sense. Now, in terms of mid-level humidity as well, I like to get an idea of all of the factors affecting this tropical cyclone and its formation. It's not going to have a problem in the mid-levels by the looks of things. It's going to be in a very moist environment. Uh, typically, there is a correlation between high levels of wind shear and high level, uh, low levels of mid-level humidity, which means uh, the higher the amount of wind shear that you have, typically the drier the environment for the tropical cyclone. That makes sense because the elevated wind shear blowing in all of that dry air into the tropical cyclone. And in this case here, it's a classic example of of that significantly elevated dry air levels uh, for this tropical cyclone, even as it intensifies. And it's really gonna have a dry air problem uh, about 24 to 48 hours after being named. The next name on the Australian naming list is, I believe, Robin. So be listening out for tropical cyclone Robin, especially if you live in the Kimberley or in the um, Arnhem Land, northern parts of the Northern Territory uh, and Western Australia as well, because this could be a tropical threat by the looks of things. Again, we're just gonna have to wait and see and have these details ironed out for us, probably by around next Thursday and Friday. Yeah, there'll be detailed coverage on the channel, you betcha, uh, on this tropical cyclone, especially as it develops, and yeah, as it gets inland. It's not gonna stand a chance. It will really weaken off quite fast uh, because, I mean, the middle humidities and the tropical moisture is really starting to pull out of the Northern Territory this time. In fact, it pulled out maybe a month ago at this point. So yeah, this cyclone will struggle the second it touches land. That is for sure, I can assure you guys that. So it will likely be a very brief, short-lived system and I don't think I don't foresee it causing too many problems um, 
in terms of a late season tropical cyclone scare. And I mean, as with every tropical cyclone that gets labeled as a Darwin impact, the news always hypes it up to be a Cyclone Tracy-like event. Cyclone Tracy was one in a hundred years. It's not going to be anything like that. At this stage, things can of course change with the forecast and Australia's notorious for firing out some very, very powerful late season tropical cyclones. So we can't be completely ironing it out here, but all roads right now are pointing to a weak tropical cyclone. And again, the Eastern WF model and the GFS model still haven't made their mind up on whether they want this system to form at all. So we're gonna to have to wait and see. It will be a waiting game throughout the course of this week to really see what's going to be happening uh, surrounding the whereabouts and the whenabouts of this tropical cyclone. The Eastern Earth wants it to form, uh, the GFS not so sure. The GFS is kind of the model that I, if it says something is going to happen even 10 days out, you know that it is going to happen. The GFS is very, very accurate at long range predictions. Uh, the Eastern Earth not so much, the axis can be terrible at long range predictions, but it has been very good this cyclone season with predicting long range tropical cyclone threats. So I would just like to make that point. So the axis model is certainly not a model to be completely discounting uh, as a long range tropical cyclone model, that's for sure. In terms of other weather, interesting weather events happening around the nation, I mean, not really. Uh, we are kind of in this changeover period where the weather is quite boring. Autumn typically doesn't have too much in terms of interesting weather around the nation. It's just kind of settled and steady. Nothing hot, nothing too cold, nothing too wet, nothing too dry, unless you're in Western Australia where it is still bone dry in the southwestern corner. There's a couple of places that picked up a very, very healthy amount of rainfall on Friday night, as I talked about yesterday. Uh, but again, nothing crazy in terms of consistent rainfall that fell. I believe the wettest rain gauge location was around 30 millimeters. And again, that's not enough to break the seven month drought that we've had over there. I shouldn't really be, be complaining because it's not the end of the world, but you can really see it when you drive up in the hills. I've got family that live through the hills, so driving up there is a pretty common uh, experience for me, and it is just so parched. It is all the trees are just crying out for some water, and I don't blame them. It has been ridiculously dry, that's for sure. And every plant that I've got around my house, uh, you have to water them every other day or every second day, otherwise they will just keel over and die. That's just how dry the soils are. Even just some humid weather would be nice. I mean, Typically this time of the year, you've got dew uh, really starting to take hold every single morning, but we haven't had that. It's been just too windy for uh, dew to really take a hold. But yeah, anyway, enough rambling about the West Australian weather. It's miserable over here, <laughs> miserably dry, and we'll be glad to take some of fun off at the Queensland's rainfall, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, as I said, nothing really interesting happening around the nation in terms of weather, and there's not really gonna be much across Southern Australia for the next 10 days. Later on in today, we're gonna to be releasing the full comprehensive winter weather forecast for the nation. We're gonna start off with New South Wales, go to Victoria, then take a look at Western Australia, at South Australia and Tasmania later on. We're gonna be giving a full comprehensive detailed outlook in terms of rainfall, snowfall and temperatures for the winter season of 2024. So again, if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you have uh, subscribed. You don't want to be missing that video, that's for sure. And also subscribe to Cyclones Extra because that's gonna be my playground for covering tropical cyclones, hurricanes and typhoons around the world. And if that's your cup of tea, then yeah, make sure you are subscribed. That will be giving some good forecasts out on those systems, that's for sure. A very exciting weekend for the Cyclones Oz channel, that's for sure. And I'm so glad to have your company for it. Closing in on 15,000 subscribers. And if you wanna make that possible, then please do consider subscribing. Leave a like on the video and tell me how I can improve in the comment section down below. But that is all from me and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.